Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Caitlin from GrayFlorals.com and today we are back with the Falling Back to Basics series. I know it took a little bit of a break with all the uh, end of the month and beginning of the month stuff going on but we're finally back to the educational videos and I know November is going to fly by really quickly so there's only a few more of these educational videos to go but I hope you guys have enjoyed this series so far. And today we are doing a requested video about mixing and matching pattern papers. Now this also kinds of go will kind of go into paper layering um, and sort of understanding the process that I go for for that, but mostly we're going to be talking about how to mix and match patterns so that you achieve the results you want. Now based on your style and your preferences, you might think three of patterns is too many, one pattern's enough. Um, so it really depends on your style. So these are just suggestions and ideas that you guys might want to use on your pages. Now I thought we'd start it off a little bit fun here. So I have a bunch of patterns here and I would love for you guys to guess how many different collections these are from. Um, so I put these together myself. It's not a kit that I bought or anything. These are just random papers that were kind of sitting together near me, put them together for this video. Um, and I think it looks really, really cute. Definitely usable for a multitude of different ideas and different, um, you know, stories you might want to tell. So leave a comment down below guessing how many different collections are here. Um, and it's different brands across here. So you guys might be able to pick and choose if you have seen anything, but not, I don't think any of these are super recent papers. We've got 2016. Uh, this one's kind of recent. Not sure when most of these are from. After you've left a comment, come back up and I'll tell you the answer. We're going to go through these. So, Janet RTS talks about this a lot. I know Nicole Jones talks about this a lot. There's a lot of scrapbookers who talk about pattern papers a lot. Um, also check out Heather Balazar, I think you pronounce her last name. Great information on her channel too. Uh, I'm just trying my best here. I'm not a professional artist of any means. I'm probably making some stuff up. But I've taken a lot of art classes, so I think I know a little bit about graphic design and understanding the visual properties of pattern papers. So we're going to get into that today. So to get started, I have this beautiful heart print um, with a little bit of mixed media on it. And this is from Crate Paper from the Maggie Holmes Gather Collection. Had no idea this was Maggie Holmes, to be honest. I saw Crate Paper on this side. I was like, oh, I'm not, I'm not sure which collection this is. Um, but it's nice peachy tone. So we've got one. Then we have this beautiful beautiful, what are these called? Crosses? Um, and this is from One Canoe Two Creekside Collection, which is a little older now, 2017. So nice neutral. Um, so we're up to two. This one's Jelly Bean Soup from 2017, the Bowl of Dreams paper. And the backside's a pink. This one is Jen Hadfield Homemade Heart of Home. And this is from 2017. So we're up to four. This is the We Are Memory Keepers High Five collection. And this is from the year, rating upside down is really hard, 2016. This one is Pink Fresh Studio Case of the Blahs. This is awkward. And this is from what, 2018? 2017, I thought that was older. <laughs> and then this one, We Are Memory Keepers again high five collection. So the same exact collection as the other one. Um, and this one's called Flare and again same year. So we have one, two, this one's a repeat. These two are from the same collection. Three, four, five, six. Six different collections, five different, oh no that'd be six different manufacturers too. Um, here's the thing. Pattern paper is completely up to interpretation. I think um, these three, actually these four, go very, very well together color-wise, right? We think this camera really helps pull all these colors together. But then if we go over here, these three go together fine color-wise. We have a nice neutral, and then these two belong together. We could add in this one, and I think that works fine. we got a darkness, you know, adding a bit more contrast. Um, we could add this one. I think it's a little bit too much. I don't think I'd ever be able to use all six of all seven of these papers on one layout, but I think it's the idea of bringing things together and mixing around the way they look so that they go better together. So if I were to put this cross paper over here, I could even take out these two. And this is a completely different vibe than what we started with. It brings more outdoorsy vibes, it's more masculine in some terms. I actually have a whole video talking about how to 
get masculine feelings on your layout. So what products to use um, and what color schemes to use. So you can check out that out down linked below. It's a little bit old now, but still the information is pretty helpful. Then we had these and you get a little bit of a lighter feel. Kind of opens the door for opportunities, whereas these were pretty basic, pretty neutral. Now another fun thing to do is to flip them all over. Wow, that's a lot of shades of blue. Now most of these I would not use together. I think this one in particular is the sore thumb and this one. The blues and pinks work fine together, but like this one just seems so off. Doesn't mean it can't be used. I think these two go together fine. These two are from the same collection. Um, these three go together very, very well. But let's start talking about the elements of design when it comes to mixing and matching pattern papers. We've talked a little bit about color already. So when I mix and match patterns specifically for a kit of 12 by 12 papers, we're not going to talk 6 by 6 right now, but just 12 by 12 papers. This could also include scraps of 12 by 12, but just 12 by 12. And we'll get into why we're talking about it in this format in a little bit. I would usually start with a busier pattern paper. So for instance, if I actually put this kit together, I believe I would have started with this one. Um, this helps set the color scheme for the rest of the kit or the layout you're about to work on. So if you start with one, you could end up with five million gazillion different avenues for what you can do with this one paper. So for example, I pulled in these yellows. Now again, these papers are just already together. I, it's just magical. My craft room's magical, guys. It just put it together. Um, we could bring in this yellow. They work well together. Now, do I think these two patterns could work well on a layout together? No, I think this is very clashy despite there being the same color on them. And we'll get into that in a little bit. And I have several other examples besides these papers, so don't worry. Um, we could also bring in the green. Not exact shade match. Um, do I think these papers could go together? Yes, I think these are a little bit more tame in terms of graphics. But we'll get into why I also don't think they'll go well together on different types of layouts in a little bit. We could bring in the pinks. Um, this is a different shade of pink. Um, we have a cream in the background. We could bring in this cream over here. Darkness. There's dark brown in these. They go together well. So this is where I would normally start to build a kit. Now it doesn't have to be the busiest paper, it could be this one, it could be this one, it, it could be this one. I mean, if you know you want a white, simple background, you'd start with this one and then pull colors from your photos. There's a hundred ways to start a layout and there's a hundred ways to end a layout. And of course there's a hundred different ways to start with one paper and end up somewhere else. So as you can tell, if you're working in the same collection, usually front and back side, we'll just use that in this example, all the colors coordinate together. So that's why we tend to want to work in collections because they work well together. But I know a lot of us struggle to do that because we don't buy full collections. We buy a few papers here and there. And once you're done with a collection and there's still like two papers left that don't really go together from the same collection, what do you do? And that's kind of what we'll talk about today is how to make everything work when they're just little bits and pieces of leftovers, for example. So these are all technically leftovers. Um, I just don't own anything from any of these collections, so don't ask me why I bought the papers other than I thought they were cute. But now that we've covered color a little bit, we see that color is an easy way to put a kit together. And again, don't hurt yourself over trying to get exact matches. You just really want the gist of the color. So like these browns, for example, um, the brown in here and the brown in these cameras, not an exact match. Um, even this color, this peachy color does not exist on this pattern paper, but if we take a look at it from the other angle, they go together because it's so similar in color. So we have the cream and a pink. So if you were to mix these cream, pink, and maybe even a little bit of the yellow, you'd eventually get this peachy tone. Um, so it's a complementary to these colors. It really helps these other colors pop because it serves almost as much as the cream does as a background, as a base. So I could talk your ear off about color, but I think we all understand a little bit about color in that you look for stuff that matches or coordinates. Um, I think I see a lot of great inspiration for color schemes. Um, sticking within collection will help you with that. Sticking within manufacturer will help you match colors if you're someone who can't, um, you know, make these two greens work because it's just against your nature to match vibrantly different greens. Because I know it probably won't show up on camera, but this is much of a brighter green than this sort of natural olive tone green. Vastly different, but I could make it work if I wanted to. Now again, we're not gonna talk about color all day because I know a lot of you get that and we'll circle back around to that when we talk about non 12 by 12s. But another thing you have to be wary of when you're mixing and matching patterns is size. 
So that's one thing that's wrong with this kit. And by wrong, I mean just in my preference, I wouldn't be able to use all these papers because their patterns are so similar in size. Let's start with the smaller of the two. These two have very, very similar pattern sizes. So let me pull these out. And what I mean by pattern size is I mean essentially the icons on the paper. And this again will come back for the six by six. But as you can see, the crosses are a little bit bigger on one than the other. So technically this one's smaller. But when you mix and match patterns, you wanna make sure that you have a balance between large patterns, medium patterns, and small patterns. Again, depending on manufacturer, depending on what you have in your stash, you might find you have a lot of large patterns or you might find you have a lot of small patterns. And this is where six by sixes come in. Six by six papers are generally scaled down versions of the 12 by 12. So for example, I have the six by six of the case of the blahs. So let me grab that to show you. So here's this. So now if I pull out this paper, it is a smaller scale version of this pattern. So if you were to use, if you wanted to use like this as a photo map, but then you remember you have the six by six version and this was your background paper, you're better off using this one because the patterns don't compete for size ratio. Um, I think these two tend to compete, but again, depending on how you use them, they might not. And we'll talk about that when we get to the layering section. But if you have six by sixes, remember that they're scaled down versions of the 12 by 12. Most of the time, there are a few times probably where they're the exact same size. Um, I think it depends on manufacturer and the design of the actual pattern itself, but depending on, just be wary that the sizes could be different, could be the same. Um, and if you are stuck in a position where you feel like your patterns are competing for sizes, which again, you totally can do, and we'll get into that with the layering, um, there's always an option to turn to the six by six to find a smaller version. So these two, again, very, very similar in size. Now let's find another set here that's very similar in size. Now, I would say these two are very similar in size. And again, they're completely different types of pattern, which I guess I probably should have already gone over. But you guys probably already know if you're a scrapbooker that, or if you like fashion or anything, there's patterns like stripes, polka dots, chevron, graphic, all sorts of patterns, and you can mix and match them as you wish. You could do horizontal and vertical stripes. No one's gonna stop you. But what we're really talking about today are the things that make up the patterns, not the patterns themselves. But we'll touch a little bit on that later. So like I said, these two are pretty similar in size. Now what's really nice about the pieces that I picked out today is they're very similar in shape as well. So those, these look like circles. They also have diamonds in the middle. And as you can tell, this is a diamond pattern as well. Now again, not exact same size. And I think these two could work nicely together if you visualize this more of as a circle than a diamond pattern. Again, depends on your perspective, depends on your style. But these could work together next to each other, whereas these, which again, they're not exactly the same size, so they could work next to each other, um, I think compete a little bit more for pattern um, size space. And I do try to flip them around a bit here so you guys can see the difference if one's on top versus another. So again, these one's pretty similar in size pattern. And you can see if I were to mat these, I don't know for what, like um, under a photo or maybe just around the edge of the layout, there's something wrong about it, but you're not sure what. Maybe it is the circles against the diamonds. Maybe that's something you don't like. Maybe it's the colors you don't like. Um, but also try to keep in mind that it could be the size ratio you don't like. So if I were to switch this out for a smaller pattern, like my little crosses here, I think this works a bit better. Now this also could be due to the colors matching pretty well, actually. Um, that cream matches the cream and the diamonds very, very well. It could also be, you know, just me. I prefer this. Um, trying to find and understand those Little things that make you choose one thing over another will really help you expedite your scrapbooking process. Um, knowing if you like large patterns as backgrounds or small patterns as backgrounds will really help you expedite making kits or choosing photos to go with certain papers. It'll really help you along. Um, so I urge you to sit down, go through some papers right now during this video if you can. Pause this video, go pull out a paper pad because we're about to start on those. And we'll start going through it together to see what types of patterns we can find and see how they go together. So like I said, all preference up to you. It's your scrapbooks. You can do whatever you'd want in them and no one's going to stop you. I'm just trying to give you some advice for, you know, making decisions on things you might struggle with. Now, I struggled with deciding if these two are the same size, but I eventually decided that they weren't the same size. So these cameras 
are actually quite large compared to these hearts, although they're pretty similar. So I would say the hearts in the mountains are similar in size versus the cameras. And in this particular kit that I just showed you, I do not have any very large patterns, but we'll get to some very large pattern examples a little bit later in this video. So here, these are very, very similar in size, but they're also, I don't think I could ever use this color combo. Um, this yellow is very hard for me to use and I have to take it a specific route for me to like it in my albums. Um, so let's see what the other size is, side is. Uh, okay, we could do these two. Now this is a different pattern, but if you take a look, this diamond could pretty much host one of these mountain squares. Now, squares, mountain shapes. Um, so I think these are very, very similar in size. No, they're also very, very different. And what's helpful with that is if they're vastly different patterns, where this one's more of a graphic pattern because it has little emblems that repeat, and this one's more of a stripe because it has patterns that repeat, you know, in a stripe orderly fashion. Um, they go very, very well together. Um, and like I said, the mountains would fit within the diamond here. So technically this one is bigger, um, but they could also be similar in your eyes depending on how you interpret the pattern. So if you find you like someone's scrapbook layouts a lot, so go to your favorite scrapbooking Instagram account, go scrolling through and see what type of patterns they use for their backgrounds. I know some people just use cardstock, but maybe check the next level up. So maybe the first layer that's behind the photo, if that's the first one that's on there. But see what they use as their main pattern paper. Because I know some people don't use them. But if you're looking to use pattern paper, find someone that uses pattern paper for this example. But if you were to take that inspiration and then look at your supplies and see, okay, is this what I'm doing or is this what I want to do? You know, understanding that little bit there will help you along. So enough of staring at these papers, although I hope you did enjoy them. Um, I'm going to move on to our next example. And again, guys, random papers from your stash. Maybe that's what you should do for these examples too. Just really get your hands on some paper and really try to evaluate what your style is based on what you'd like to be, your ideal, and what you're currently doing and seeing if you're on the right path um, based on your inspiration or if you need to change things up a little bit to you know, go outside your comfort zone and try something new. So if you're not a loose paper person, which again, I don't have that many loose papers. I don't normally buy paper like this. Um, I actually usually buy it in paper pad form. So here I actually have an example where I have both the 12 by 12 and the six by six patterns. Now I have used a little bit out of each, so if we're missing a whole pattern, I do apologize, but we can just take a look here at the front. Now again, these are scaled patterns. They scale them down so you can see what they look like without you know, just seeing one little two by two square of the actual pattern. So keep that in mind when you're buying them. These are not the actual sizes of the patterns within the paper pad. These ones are a little bit more on point um, for size wise. I'm trying to see if there's an example here. Actually, these are smaller as well. Much smaller now that I see that. So let's do some comparison. And again, this is the Jen Hatfield Everyday. Really, really great paper pad, very versatile. Let's take an easy pattern such as this geometric shape. We love a good triangle. A distress triangle and then if I find it in this one oh it's like there it's so cute isn't it how one's so much different I sorry that the um, paper pad seems so far away it's hard to fit these on your desk when you're laying them down so here we can tell the it's scaled down a significant amount um, there's probably an actual percentage maybe this is 25% of this scale actually that would make sense because it's a fourth do we see? Because if you were to put this in your photo editor in Photoshop and you were to drag it down and squish it, it should look like this when you do it six by six. We love math. Um, but what we want to explain here is that since we have these two options, it's great to one, have these four layouts because sometimes you want this, say you wanted this as a layer on a piece of craft card stock, but you already had a pattern similar in size to this one. So you didn't want them to compete in size. And again, you might want them to compete in size. I don't know your style or preferences, but by having the six by six, you have another option. And I believe six by eights are pretty similar to the six by six ratio. You know, a little bit different because they're rectangles, but I do think they're scaled down patterns for the sake of scaling. Um, I'm sure it's a nice percentage. Um, but as you can see here, scaled down can be used in different ways than the 12 by 12 can. So as we go through some of these examples, and again, I have more um, examples to go through too. We just want you to, if you take this and we start going through, I'm just gonna use this cover so we don't have to flip through as much. I believe they have the similar patterns on each. But if we look at these, we can see so many different types of patterns. 
Easy ones to identify include polka dot. This is a chevron stripe. We have a geometric. We have a, another polka dot. We have a graphic, I guess. Really depends on how you want to phrase them. So as you go through your paper pads and you start to try to interpret these patterns, these designs, you could also take inspiration from Instagram and Pinterest if you look up the paper pad. I know some people tag them, but even here on this example, which there might be a bigger, okay, there's some on the back too. If we take a look at this example, I wish I had examples with these paper pads, but often I mix and match, so it's very hard. On this example, they have the triangle and then they have the lemon paper. Two of the main patterns in here. Oh, look, they're both on the, mm, yep, they're both right here on the back. But to get better scale, we'll open up the paper pad. And we need the lemon and the triangle. Perfect. Okay, so we can see here, vastly different in size. This I'd consider a pretty large pattern. Um, and they actually cut it down pretty small in their example. So I think that's interesting to note that just because it's a large pattern doesn't mean it can't be tamed um, in terms of not making it the center of show. You could use it as a layer and that sort of thing. So if you have a paper pad again, I'd highly recommend looking up examples. And I think, you know, not everyone who posts on Instagram or Pinterest is a professional if there is such a thing, but they all have their own styles. So that's a great way to get inspiration in terms of layering your pattern. So if you do have a paper pad you want to use, highly recommend looking up ideas. And you're not just looking at the design of the layout, you're looking at the patterns that they mix together. Cause maybe you could just put together a color scheme of your papers in your pad here and make your own layout with them based on theirs that they had picked. But we also have a nice um, hexagon here. We have like this beautiful jewel pattern, this like Moroccan tile pattern, the pineapples, the oranges, the lemons, so many fruits. Um, this is like a plaid or a gingham, a map pattern. I don't know what that's classified as. And then we also have script. Script patterns are very, very big um, right now, especially. Um, I just got one in the cocoa vanilla stuff that I showed you guys earlier this week. Um, just so many great patterns out there and you'll find that you have so many yet they're all so different but I promise they are very similar polka dots very very similar um, that sort of thing but they're also very different these are very close together large polka dots these are very far apart small polka dots do you see what I mean endless endless opportunities when it comes to layering when it comes to papers now since I have a six by six here we'll do a mock-up of a kit and sort of an idea so let's I haven't planned this, so this is all freehand. Let's do a large pattern background. This one I always want to use. I think I have used one of these back in maybe May or June. Okay, large pattern background. To be honest, these go very, very well together. Um, even though they're very similar in size. Um, I think it's because of the exact color match that works really well. But let's say you use this. As your background beautiful beautiful floral then you turn to your six by six or your six by eight just a smaller scale of the patterns and technically it doesn't have to match the collection it's just in this case it does we're gonna start looking for medium and large patterns to put this at bay now you may be able to find a medium or a small pattern in your 12 by 12 totally okay I just want to show you guys that there are other options with a six by six so like for example this one I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tear them all out and it's going to make me upset. I'd, I'll just put it in a kit after so I don't have to put everything back in this paper pad. So what I really pulled out this one for is when I first saw it, I thought color match. Center of these flowers, beautiful yellow color, they match color wise. Now when we think size wise and we think pattern wise, which I would say are the three main categories. Um, again, I'm not a professional artist, designer, crew. I'm not a professional guys, I'm making most of this up based on my own beliefs in terms of design and what I've learned over the years through college classes and, you know, high school art class. But besides color design, now we need to evaluate it for size and pattern. So this is not a floral, so they don't clash in that way. If this was a small floral, you need to evaluate is it too busy for this one, is this one too busy for that one, that kind of thing, and we'll go over an example of that as well. But this one is a very graphic, very shape-oriented, whereas this is, a, this is also graphic. I don't mean to confuse you. Um, this is a very graphic design in terms of it is organic, it is repetitive, but not as repetitive as this one. This one's very modular, very hexagonish. Um, but this one would work really, really well as, let's grab a photo. Why don't we have a photo example? 
here's a terrible photo of myself which kind of works really well because the maroon here matches the deep maroons. It's a great day to have this photo here on my desk. This one works really, really well. Pretend I cut the photo down so it's a perfect mat. I don't want to cut the photo. It's one of my favorite photos. So now we need to go back because obviously this is a very plain page. We want a little bit more pizzazz. And I may be passing choices that you guys would pick. That doesn't mean, those aren't bad choices. That doesn't mean they wouldn't work. I don't think the oranges would work very well. That's just a personal preference. I don't want to bring orange into this layout, but you might be able to make it work. This one, again, I'm not into that color matching. Um, not feeling orange on this layout. The polka dots. I think these compete pretty vastly in terms of contrast between the two patterns. So the black and white could stand on its own against this background as well as the yellow. But the black and white's very, very stark compared to the yellow, which sort of soothes you in because you already have experienced this color on this page. And this brings a lot of contrast with the black dots. Again, doesn't mean you can't do it. It's just something I do not want to do on this particular example. The lemons, again, great color match. I don't think I need lemons and flowers because this would technically be a floral in my book. Um, it does have some flowers on it, so I don't know if that qualifies for anything. But I don't typically put two of the exact same pattern next to each other, although you guys have probably seen me do multiple polka dots next to each other in terms of photo layers. But what's really nice about this, so for example, uh, say I wanted this big block of yellow. I wanted to stay that size. I could take this lemon paper. Normally wouldn't, but I have done something like this in the past. And essentially what I would do is use it just for its color. Um, so this has yellow and greens that match the background paper perfectly, of course. So what I would do is do a very, very thin, let me show you guys on some white. I would take a very, very thin section of this to map my photo. And if you can see here, it makes the pop of yellow, some pops of green, but it's not a floral at this point anymore. You can't see it enough to identify what it is. It could be polka dots, it could be stripe, it could be anything. I could even layer it again on the yellow. Again, I wouldn't, I would pair this maybe with a pink and then maybe another yellow to then, you know, offset it from the background. But you can use these patterns next to each other. I just wouldn't let them stand like this next to each other, like I am for this example of this yellow. That's going to stay this size for this example. So that's why I'm going to put back. But you can totally use them as layers despite their overarching pattern design. Pineapples, same thing, could use these just for the color. Now the problem with some of these 6x6 six six is there's a pretty wide border here. So if I were to layer my photo, I'd have to put it in this far and then like trim it off to get that color. And this one might read more as a pineapple depending on how thick of the photo layers you do. This one has a distressed look. I don't really want to bring that into my layout or my patterns or my layers under my photo. I just think it would bring a weird vibe. This one again, I said this would match very well earlier for the 12x12 12 12 version. So... This is also a color that's already present on this page. Very, very convenient, I know. Look at that one. We'll be revisiting that one. Um, but it is a floral pattern. So if I were to bring this in, and again, I'm sorry if I'm a hypocrite and I did this on another layout and I'm now saying I would never do that. Um, my styles change all the time. My tastes in photos change all the time. This green and white would make a great pattern as a layer. Would it make a great paper as a layer. Sorry, I misspoke there. Um, it's serving here as a little bit of interest in terms of pattern, but you can't tell it's a leaf pattern. You can't tell it's a floral pattern, but it does serve for color. And I would mat this photo on that just fine. I dig that. It's cute. Brings in the same color scheme. Again, this is if you're working with the same 12x12 12 12 and 6x6 6 6 collection, paper pad, etc. Would I bring the same pattern in as a smaller version? No, not usually. I would never do that because it just looks so funny that this one's so shrinked and this one's so large. But again, if you can pull it off, I believe you can. Totally, totally do it. This one, another great pattern. Pink, beautiful. Let's pull it out. Again, matchy matchy. I love when things match. Now, we have a floral as my main Again, it'd probably be easier if I did an actual layout, but for this example, um, I don't want to use this photo for these colors. Um, it would make a great, great layer next to that green. And here, I'll bring it up so you guys can see the color a bit better. So here we can see um, we have this crazy pattern, then we have this crazy pattern. Now, for some people, that might be too busy. Completely understand. But if we were to bring this yellow, say this yellow was the next layer, I think that's a little bit too modular, too many modular pieces at once. Um, and I'm showing you guys the typical... Um, 
I would call this my typical photo mat size. Again, it varies. I know some people do really, really, really small ones and some people do a lot larger ones and then they could also change halfway through. Um, really depends on you. But I would not mix these pinks and yellows together only because they're pretty similar in terms of their pattern style. Very modular, very repetitive, very similar, in, except for their color. So I'm gonna have to find one more to go underneath these to make it all come together and make it work. So I need something to buy in this pink and this yellow that's not graphic, that's not pink or yellow. We could do pink, just a different shade of pink. Navy, again, don't wanna bring in that high of a contrast for this page. Another floral, again, I don't typically mix, especially two different types of floral that have big, bold flowers. Um, I consider these big, bold flowers for a 6x6. Six six. This is a pretty large pattern for a 6x6, six six. and if you saw the 12x12, 12 12, you would think the same thing, very large flowers. Um, but smaller, simple florals could mix well with this. So don't get me wrong, there's different styles of florals. Florals are one of those crazy topics. Um, wood green's another crazy topic because there's like small patterns, there's big patterns. We could bring in the blue, we don't want the blue. Another blue, this kind of pattern could work really well. Um, it sort of matches the stylization of this background, but it's a different color. And again, brings in the contrast we didn't want. So we're gonna skip over that one. This is a very, very small pattern, and I think it actually hurts my eyes to look at right now. I'm sure it also looks funny on the camera. Um, so we're just going to skip over that one. Um, we could bring in a wood grain. Like I said, this is one of those patterns that works in so many different situations. And this is like um, a one panel piece. So there's some that show you the different panels. If it were a hardwood floor or a table that's made of different chunks of wood, um, so there's so many different types of wood grain and there's so many different types of florals and there's so many different types of stripes It's hard to think about it's hard to gather them all together, but you could definitely use them So if I were to bring in this one Which there's the gosh darn triangle pattern. It's just hurting my eyes today, man um, this is a very very organic style of pattern but what we're really looking at it for in terms of photo layers is really the color and you know what will actually be seen. So in this case, it'd go next to the yellow. It would suffice dividing the pink and the yellow with something that's simple, but yet still gives it enough of a buffer that, let me just cut off this side. Pretend that you can see those layers. Um, that would give it enough of a buffer so that they both can breathe and thrive on their own. But again, this is all hypothetical. I'm not putting this layout together. These are not the colors I wanna use for this photo, but that's an example. So let's find another example that's a good buffer besides wood grain. Text is another really great buffer. This one's black and like this tealy blue, not something I'd normally use on this color scheme, but a white and black text pattern, script, whatever you want to call it, would be a great buffer as well. Red polka dots, another great buffer. This pattern is similar in size to these because the spacing on the dots, however, could be a great spacer between two graphics, despite this also being graphic, depending on the size of the dots. Again, there's so many different types of patterns when it comes to dots. Oh my gosh, guys, this was a very large video. Um, and I'm sorry it's so long, but I think there's a lot in here that you guys could take back with you. And if you are going through papers right now, I hope you're finding things that are similar to these. Maybe try to create a dupe of this um, project where you find a large floral and then you find a small floral to mat on top of a graphic modular pattern and then something to go in between. There's so many different ways you can do it. And this is just one example. I promise there's a million um, beautiful graphic. Um, small enough in size to not compete with this. I would use this if if this yellow spanned 12 by 12 or 12 inches. Um, I wouldn't want this to touch this pattern, mainly because these strokes look like petals to me and I think it could get a little bit blurred lines in terms of eye lines and eye sights for this page if it wasn't touching this. I think that made no sense. I'm, I apologize. Another great buffer. This is a very, very small pattern. It'd make a great buffer to give breathing room to both the pink and the yellow. This floral is so, so busy. Um, in terms of busy patterns and simple patterns, I think this is busy. Actually, I think all of these are pretty busy. If you ask me, most of these are busy patterns. I would consider this to be a non-busy pattern. I would consider... I don't even remember seeing that one. Um, this, that's a busy pattern. This isn't busy either. It's pretty um, black and white. Oh, that triangle is the busiest thing I've seen all day. Not busy, busy. And 
let's go over one more thing. Busyness doesn't necessarily mean the pattern. Sometimes it's the colors. Sometimes it's the contrast from the colors. Um, that's probably why it's so hard for us to look at the blue because it is high contrast. Tell me it looks funny. It looks so funny on the camera screen. Anyway, this one has high contrast too, which appears busy to me. But if you are interested in high contrast, this might not be as busy for you. Really depends on your personal taste and your eye for design. This one's very busy. I dislike this pattern. Non-busy, again, these are the same, same exact colors as the last one. Same exact navy and blue, but I think this one's much less busy than this one. And it is a scale. It's not like this one, one's busy, one's not. It's like this one's kind of busy, this one's super busy. It's a moving scale, depending on your taste. So busy, but again, would I put this in between these two? No, because it's again, the same exact type of modular pattern. Same probably size as these, what are these, octagons? octagons probably the same size as these squares way too close in size in my personal taste we could do a stripe i think that's a nice bold breather room one thing i hate about laying with stripes is if you layer with one so for example if i put it this way then the top section and the bottom section will have this bold pink stripe at the top and bottom and the sides are like you know like a ladder because they're stripes um, so i always hated that about stripes um, we already talked about the lemon. We have some cut aparts. Wood grain, another great choice. Um, this is not part of this kit, but that's okay. We'll just leave it in there. But that was my faux example of layering some papers. Now, I do have some other examples I want to go over um, for pattern sake. So let me move this out of the way. Thank you to Jen Hadfield every day for participating in this video. We need to use that paper pad again soon. Let me know if you guys want me to use this papers again soon. Uh, I will say that it's one of those paper pads that kind of needs support in terms of almost all the patterns to me are like the same size, but that might just be a me thing. Um, but let me know if you want me to use this paper pad again. We'll see what else I have. I do have a collection here. Now we won't go through this because a lot of this one is missing. Um, I've used it quite a few times and hopefully there's not a ton of glare. This one's still in this packaging. This is the Summer Fun Collection. So if we just look at it based on these outer layers here, let me, if I boost this up, usually the glare is better. That side's better, but this side's not. Better. So here are all of our patterns. When you guys take out a collection kit or a paper pad or a kit you've made, take a look at all the papers, sort of lay them out like this in any way you want. Obviously they put these in a certain order to invoke a certain feeling of fun and balance, um, but we'll just take them one by one. We have a very bold floral. We have a neutral, a nice gray wood grain, very calming. I love a good wood grain. We have a smaller floral. You see how these don't compete in size? Um, we have This is like the biggest bloom on there and it's like, it's slightly bigger than the smallest one on there. They work well together. You could easily use these together on a layout. Just not necessarily my taste. I don't do that very often, but it's possible. A nice plaid. Busy in terms of lots of color and lots of movement. We have a nice graphic flamingo. Really cute. I think it's a little bit busy, but I think it's just because of the shape of the birds. Busy. It's got like an S and then it's got a down and then it's got a... It's just the bird itself. Not most birds are that busy. Um, a nice stripe. Again, this one seems vertical, but it could also be horizontal. So don't don't forget about your horizontal stripes, people. We have this overarching pattern. This pattern sort of sets the theme for the entire collection, in my opinion. It contains the pineapples, the birds, the florals, the palm leaves. Everything that has to do with collections in this pattern. I almost call it a catch-all pattern. And also don't forget that these are A's and B sides. So eventually you're going to have to make a choice. So if you find that you tend to be a wood grain person over a large floral and these were the fronts and backs, just flip it over to the wood grain. You're not going to look at the busy floral if you're not going to. Just know your style, take it one step at a time, give yourself some challenges but not too many. We want you to use your stuff, not just watch it sit in the corner. So I'd recommend doing that as well when you're going through your patterns. We have a nice little cross here, very very small pattern, 
um, think it's really, really cute and can go with so many different things because it's so small. It's rare to find a 12 by 12 that has that small pattern um, that's not too busy. Um, and I think that one's a great example. This one's similar to the Flamingos, except it's multicolor, so I find it very busy personally, but it's really cute. We have these prawn leaves, and since this is tone on tone, again, the green in the background sort of is just a deepened and then lightened slightly for the actual pattern part. Not as busy to me despite the pattern being so close together, but it could be busy for some people. Totally get that. We have this yellow, did you see the dust come off? That's just cat hair. I apologize. <laughs> um, this yellow pattern here, um, very graphic, chevron-esque, um, sort of has a stripe vibe to it because it does have these chopped up pieces. You can interpret patterns in so many different ways. This one almost reads tribal to me, um, so I could use it for, you know, those sort of related layouts like, I don't know, Animal Kingdom or um, Hawaii Vacation, those sort of vibes I'm getting from that. But I don't think it's that busy. Again, it's tone on tone. If this was black and white, it would be so, so busy. But tone on tone really helps make the pattern a little more subdued, gives it interest without being the center of attention, which we love. Another one that's kind of a catch-all, we have prawn leaves. I think these are lemons, and we have, I think I said prawn leaves. I meant frawn. Frawn? And then we have the flamingos here. A catch-all busy pattern. I don't particularly like those. Um, then we have the beautiful watermelons. Who misses summer already? Um, some watermelons here. High contrast um, between the pinks. Just, I wouldn't call this tone on tone because the tones are separate from each other. They're vastly different. We have a hot pink and a bubblegum pink. You know, different. Um, then we also have the touch of green and the high contrast from the black. This one I find very busy because there's not a lot of breathing room between each of the elements. But you might not find it as busy, and that's fine. Diagonal stripe with all the colors under the sun. Very, very cute, but very busy in my book. Like, these two would be very hard for me to use next to each other. But if I had a buffer in there, say, I don't know, this beautiful wood grain, I think it'd give it some breathing room and I'd be able to use it on a layout. That doesn't mean you can't use these together, it just means I need some breathing room on my layouts in terms of mixing and matching patterns, which you might find you need too after watching this video, after looking at your inspiration, after looking at your papers, your paper pads, your collections, you might find that you're not using the busy stuff because you're struggling to find that breathing room that you desire to. Then we have a classic polka dot. Love me a polka dot. Now, six by six, pretty much the exact same pattern, it's the exact same patterns, but smaller scale. So if I were to show you, again, this one's, a hey, wait a minute. <laughs> okay, the six by six has some extra ones too, like this little ice cream cone paper. These look pretty similar in size now that I see it. So let's pull it out if I have it and see how, what size they really are. Oh, is this it? Yep. Holy cow. Now, to be honest, I can't imagine using this one. I can imagine using this one as a small touch on a layout. Cannot imagine using this one. Again, I could just, if I cut it here, so one of the things you guys might notice that I like to do is I like to take a 6x6 six six and cut two strips out of it and stack them as if it was a 12 inch strip. Now the reason I don't tend to do that with 12x12 12 12 papers is because the patterns are simply too large for what I need. So if I wanted a small strip on a layout, I would have to take like, I don't know, I don't want to chop these birds in half, so I'd have to take one from like the center here, um, at least center it in a little bit more. And then these all look like they could be their own individual embellishment clusters. But again, that's just me. If you do this right in your style, the way you want, you could probably pull off an amazing layout on top of it. In fact, I'm sure there's already layouts that exist with this as the background. But personally, I cannot manage a pattern this busy on my typical layout. Again, totally depends on you. You could do a nice cream mat and then do a nice collage of photos. Not much embellishing, not much crazy other patterns going on. And that might work. That could work beautifully. I think that's a great option if you want to use these pattern papers, but they tend to be too busy. Don't over embellish. Take it one step at a time. And I think that if you let the colors decide your mat, so just doing plain pink cardstock or plain green cardstock will help you along. But again, be wary that this is not the same size sometimes. And it's good to look up collections before you buy them anyway, because there could be different B sides that you'd prefer over the others. So just keep that in mind. So let's put these ones away. I think you've seen enough of summer and now you're sad that summer's over. Um, we'll just take these out of the way here. 
I'll go over a few more options in terms of different patterns. So here I have the Summer Sun collection. It's not the full collection, I don't think, but I received this in a grab box. So I have enough papers here to show you guys some options um, with what you might expect in a collection. And we'll flip these over too because they are double-sided, so that's nice. So when I look at collections, um, especially ones I get in a grab box, I often know which patterns I will use and which ones I won't. I could use this one. I could use this yellow stripe. I would never use these flip-flops. So if I turn that over, it becomes a neutral in this case because they do um, solid colored backs on some of these. I could use this stripe. I think this is really cute. Could I use these whales? Probably. Will I? Probably not. Okay, but they're really cute, so I'm going to keep them. But I just wanted to show you guys the other side. Another stripe. Do we see a pattern? There's already three stripes. That's a lot. Then we have this anchor again. Um, I think I have used a paper like this, if not the exact same one already. But the back side's just a plain, which I really like in terms of these collections, is they do give you a plain option on most of these papers, which comes in handy because these are very unique colors, especially this orange and yellow. Maybe even this teal is very unique. Um, and this red, it's not even red, it's like a coral. I have no idea. But when it comes to collections that are unique, it's sometimes hard to find other things that pair in. So if you're stuck with, say, this, well, this is all I own from this collection. Say this was, I couldn't find any matches for any of these items in my stash. So this was the only things I had in this color scheme. For instance, I definitely have things that match. Um, pretend that I don't, though. Here's what we could do. We could easily come up with a layout, but obviously there's a lot going on in a lot of these patterns. So you want to you know, dictate one, which one's your favorite. I would pick this one. This one's beautiful. But it's a very, 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 very busy, busy pattern paper. So how do we tone it down? How do we use it in chunks or something like that so that it's breathable, gives the layout and the photo more space to breathe and shine because obviously we want the photos to shine, not necessarily the paper. So when it comes to that, the first thing I gravitate towards is this actual, this yellow paper. Now I'm a fan of horizontal stripes versus vertical. So for this example, we're doing a nice vertical, we're doing a nice horizontal, even though it's painted as a vertical for the record. And again, this is the Summer Sun collection from 2015. And if you guys have this in your stash, let me know in the comments down below. I always love it when people use supplies that I actually own. Isn't that craziest thing? With like the hundreds and thousands of collections that are out there, if you guys own anything that I have shared in this video, please leave me a comment down below. I'd love to use things that you guys actually own so you guys can get real life examples for my scrap of glass, particularly of things you already own. I'd love to do that. So um, these two, I think, work really well together. We have a I would call this a low to medium busy pattern paper. There's like a blue stain on that one, very odd, um, because it does have these dashes, which I think are a little bit distracting, but if I were to cut this paper down, it'd be fine. Um, they wouldn't be competing in size or anything. So we got that down, we love that. Orange can be a great color. A plain color can be great, in this case orange, to help ground everything. So I could do a whole border of the orange here and again, no competition. It's not a pattern. And I could also gut the orange and use the flip-flop pattern if I really, really, really wanted to, but I don't. But I would gut the orange anyway to save more of the orange pattern because, again, this is all the collection I own. I own nothing in these colors in my stash, not a single bit. So don't ask me how I'm going to do anything else on this layout besides, you know, put the papers together. Um, then, if we cut this floral down, again, I wish I did a live example, but it was very hard for me to do this. I have a very hard time planning layouts in advance, so we're doing some live examples, but not cutting them. So I would cut a big chunk out of this floral, put it on the left-hand side. I would not bring in this stripe right away. This would be a photo layer, but not next to this floral. And you want to make sure your stripes are going the same way. So make sure they're both the same way, if that's something you care about. If it's not, toss it out the window, do whatever you'd like. Um, then we're going to bring in this pattern. We'll do a little bit of whale underneath my photo and then a little bit of stripe. Do we see how it's coming together? Since we covered up the whales, they're not competing with the floral anymore, so we can layer those together. Um, the stripe doesn't compete with the whale. It does compete a little bit with the floral, but if you imagine a picture here, it's not a pattern that competes anymore. It's just a color that is introduced into the layout. So that's something I could do with that layout or with these papers, but who knows what I'll do. I definitely own things in this color. It was just an example that I said that. I'm sorry if I fooled anyone. But I think these are really great patterns. And again, 
you can always flip them over. Isn't that funny how they also go together on this side? I think it's funny that these three are very red pink oriented. Although I do have a lot of orange and yellows on this side, so I guess that makes sense. Okay, so that was Summer Sun. I think I said Summer Fun earlier. Summer Sun, 2015. Then lastly, I have this set. This is Making Waves. Again, sorry they're both nautical. I got these in the same box, and this is 2015 as well, Making Waves. And I really love this one. I think this kind of speaks to the Jen Hadfield patterns. It speaks to the Pink Fresh Studio patterns. And I didn't really cover pattern papers that are those mixed media, free flowing types. Um, one, because I don't have a lot. And two, I rarely, rarely use them. Um, so I don't think I'm a great person to give examples on something I don't use. I tend to go for these patterns, the um, modulars, the polka dots, the stripes, the chevrons, the traditional patterns. Um, and then you get this. And then, <laughs> and then on a rare occasion, I'll use something like this, which I think is, again, very, very busy. Lots of color, lots of different shapes and patterns within itself. Oh my gosh, this one's busy. But it can be done. It can be used, I promise. And you could do it too, however you'd like, because that's how scrapbooking works. We love that scrapbooking is no rules. And if you guys have not seen the rest of the Falling Back to Basics series, definitely check out the playlist link down below. Grab some supplies, sit down, do some scrapping, do some coloring, do whatever you want to do during a video, and just play those. The whole playlist is probably way too long. Okay, but if we start looking at these, again, we can compare size of pattern, we can compare color, and we can compare busyness and contrast. I think that's what I said earlier. I had to do this video in multiple takes because my cat needs me and I'm the only one home. Um, so I apologize that I'm a little bit off kilter. But I tell you guys all the time that I don't script these videos. Um, I think that it's more unnatural to do that and I think I come up with better things when I don't script my videos. But if you guys would like me to try a script a video, I guess I can do that. But if you are interested in more tutorial style videos, more lessons like these. I do these over on my Patreon every single month and you guys can check them out there for more information. So let's compare some sizes of these. This little anchor and this little polka dot, very similar in size. However, the anchor is larger. If we want to get technical, the anchor is larger. It would fit bigger than this dot. So it wins, it's larger. But I would not normally put these two together. Actually, for this example, we're gonna remove the other ones. I think they're a little bit distracting. Um, and we're also going to switch these. Now, if you were to do a whole layer around your layout, whoa, the more I look at these patterns, and I've looked at like hundreds of patterns, it seems, um, the more they start to make my eyes do funny things. I don't know if you guys experienced that, but like back with the triangle paper and the 6x6 paper pad, getting that vibe from this polka dot. And it might be because I'm at the side of it, not on top of it like you guys are, but whoa. Let me know if you guys would put these two patterns together. It's I'm having an internal conflict about it. I don't think they'd be next to each other. I think I'd have to put a divider. And in terms of a divider, out of the six options I have left, I would either do the plain navy. Guys, don't put these two together. It's way too close. Um, we, they're the exact same size in case you can't tell. Um, so I would never put these two right next to each other unless, unless you were doing one of those split layouts where it just changes color. You know, it'd be a 12 by 12, but you'd cut this one at 6 and this one by 6 and then actually, like, you know, stack them so, like, look like they changed color halfway through. Then you can do that. But out of these six, this is the busier side. Um, I would probably pick this navy as something in between them. So it would be something like that. So we'd have a border around that. Bring in my example model photo. It just feels better already. And I don't know if it's because we cut down the red. You know, the pattern's like non-existent anymore, but you could do it larger too. Uh, say you wanted a whole strip across. If you just did two lanes of navy across, it'd work. You could do it for the bottom half. You just need the navy, I think, in there to separate them. I think this is a little bit too much, maybe that much. Let me, how do I cover up the rest of it? My arms. Um, I think that's a little bit better, but again, you can kind of tell they're still competing in a way that makes me uncomfortable. It's not visually pleasing to the eye, but it might be visually pleasing to your eye. And guess what? That's all that matters. All this could be, could bring you no new ideas. Maybe these are things you already do without thinking about it. Um, 
when I knew that you guys wanted to see a video like this, I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> I don't know how to explain that kind of stuff. But I sat down and started thinking about patterns and design in general. And I came across the idea of, you know, there's different patterns. Stripes, polka dots are the, you know, the main two that I tend to use. Then we get into the busy patterns, the stripes that are diagonal, the stripes that are different sizes, the stripes that have stitches, the stripes that are wonky. There's a million different patterns out there, guys, and like I said, there are no rules when it comes to scrapbooking, so make sure you're just going through your stuff, you know, finding out what you like. Like I said, if you go online and find what other people are doing that you like, that you want to strive to do, it might be better to get those examples with stuff you already have and sort of taking it your own route. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was a little bit crazy. I know it was very long, and I do apologize about that, but I had a lot of examples and a lot of stuff to cover. And I hope you guys liked all the examples because I pulled out all the stops, guys. I made this kit from things that were sitting on my desk. Um, did you see how much everything changed when I brought up these ones? Maybe it's because I'm in person, but like, let me pull these down a little bit more. They're like, oh, that's nice. And then you bring these in and you're like, what even happened to this? So we can tell we're, most of us are pretty good with color. Um, these two go great together. I can even pull in the navy if, I, navy if I wanted. These two, great together. Let's just make another kit right now. These three. <laughs> I'd probably also bring in a blue and green, but I don't like the ones I have in front of me. But do you see what I mean? There's so many possibilities and there's so many different ideas that there's no way that I could ever see things the exact same way everybody else does. So if you have design tips in terms of mixing and matching patterns and layering them under your photos, and if you guys want a whole video of me layering my photos with pattern paper or different ideas for layering photos with pattern paper, let me know. We have a couple more episodes of these classes for Falling Back to Basics series. So if you guys want to see that, let me know. We can do some more photo layering examples with like actually cutting the paper because I know that's probably what you want to see. But since everyone's so different and has so much different taste and design and ideas, there's infinite possibilities. And these were just a few examples. And I hope it helps you with a couple more design process decisions. Maybe things you're already doing, like I said. Um, you're probably already doing this and you don't even understand why you're doing it or that you were doing it. Um, you're like, wow, these look great together. Must be the color. Must be the vibe. Um, it's probably because of the size, it's probably because of so many different reasons, the contrast, all of that stuff. So keep that in mind next time you do pull out your scrapbooking stuff. And again, let me know if you guys own any of these supplies and want to see me use them in the future. I'd love to use supplies that you guys own so that you can get inspiration for the things you already own. And then we're not buying new things, but I hope you guys did enjoy this video. I'll try to have some of these products linked down below. Again, a lot of them are quite old couple years old at least um, so you guys could check them out if you're interested but you don't have to buy to do these sort of processes you have things at your house right now I promise that would work in all these instances but again I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the falling back to basics series thank you guys so so much for watching and don't forget to check out the links below for the playlists and all the good stuff thank you guys again for suggesting this video and I will see you guys next time bye